Hello, this is Sean Conley from Epic Games. And today we're going to have a look at the Live Link input device. Basically, if you've seen this previous tutorial um, that I did where we use an Xbox controller to drive a camera crane and rig rail for virtual production stages, uh, we used Live Link and enhanced inputs, and we had to make data assets and bind events to triggers in the engine. Uh, you don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. To the fabulous Richard Graham. He made this plugin here called Live Link Input Device. So it basically takes 30, 45 minute job down to something that's like 10 minutes. People have been asking me to make a video about how to use a Xbox controller to drive a ICBFX or end display wall. So I was going to make this regardless uh, for that tutorial. And I figured I would just split it apart into two videos because this this has a lot of use cases, not only in you know virtual production and performance capture, but also in like live events. So we're just going to make like a little tank today, something that kind of moves like a tank. Uh, if you want to make something that moves like a car with suspension and you know moves off the right axles, and I don't know, maybe head on over to Tony Bowron's channel. But for our purposes, we just need something simple, and uh, we're not that fancy over here. So. First things first, uh, enable the Live Link Input Device plugin here. So let's go ahead and make a blueprint actor. And we'll just call this uh, BP Xbox Drive. Double click. Check this out here. Go to the event graph. You know, you need an EAU. We'll close that for now. And let's add a live link controller here. And then right click on your live link controller, add event, and then on updated. So live link update is uh, basically editor tick, right? So it'll update as fast as editor tick will. So as always, be careful what you put in here. If it's something that's you know very computationally heavy, then it could slow down your engine. So it's a fair warning. So here, let's go to evaluate. If I could type live link frame. Awesome. Then we are going to set this role here. Since we have the plugin enabled, we have this input device role. And this is the kind of secret sauce right here. Let's promote uh, this subject variable so that we can set it on the actor and the level. And then let's make it public now because I always forget to do that. Cool. And now here's the best part. So if you right click over data asset and you hit split struct pin and then the result data frame split struct pin and all this gold comes piling right out of it here. Right. So as before, we don't have to go digging and setting up all of these buttons. They're all right here, which is great. As an example of, of what sort of data this kicks out, let's just go to the left stick here and we will print. There we go. Well, not duration. Let's do this. String. All right. Let's compile. Move this over for now. Put this guy here in our level. And then go over to the Live Link tab here, which you can get under Windows Virtual Production Live Link. And you add a source. And again, you'll see this Live Link input device. Going to add that, you see the, the um, gamepad. I have a gamepad plugged in here to my machine. And you see that that's green. And we should be able to, assuming that I, there we go. Now I need to set this on the actor. All right. So you see all the zeros. And now, let me turn on my key. There you go. And now you see. Oops, when I put the left stick down, you see one, right? So this is how fast Live Link update is ticking inside your scene. So basically, it's just spitting out, you know, zero or one, right? It's it's just saying this has been initiated or not. So we're going to use that uh, as a way to drive our blueprint. Okay, let's go ahead and we can. Mix those, turn off the camera. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use that left stick to be able to drive it around. So under valid frame, go add actor local offset here. 
and then split struct pin over this so that we can get at individually to x, y, z. And then we're going to want left stick up and down. And we're going to do a subtract. To, so left stick up and subtract left stick down so that we can go basically forwards and backwards. So if we plug this into y, compile. Do I have save on? Save on compile. OK, so if you don't see me saving, it's because I have I save on compile success. All right, so now let's just make this easier. Let's put like a little code or something here. There you go. Zero you out. Take you in. Put you under. Oh. You under here. And zero you out. And let's kind of rotate. I don't know which direction is forward, so we'll see. Anyways, so now that we have this here, let's grab our controller, and you see that we are moving it here very slowly, and we need to rotate our cone around, but that's fine. If you're having trouble here with your Xbox controller, kind of like moving your windows and stuff around, if you go into if you go into editor settings and you type joystick. Yeah. So level editor joystick controls. You can toggle this off. And now let's take this phone. Let's rotate it around here. Cool. So now that was great, but that was super slow. So what we're going to let's just add a molt so that we can multiply the speed. Let's um, promote this to I need to promote to variable, and we'll call this what um, speed malt. Make it public, compile so we can get a default, and uh, let's just do this with ten or so. Plug this in. All right, let's go back here. And now, awesome, we're a lot faster. And since we made it public, you can change this here on the actor. So it's probably going to be super fast. Yep, great. All right, let's get to 10. Awesome. So we have something that's going back and forth with our Xbox controller using the uh, L stick. Perfect. Let's keep it building onto our little tank here. Now, let's use, um, since we're going like forwards and backwards, I mean, we might want to rotate it around, have it drive around. So let's add a actor local rotate. Rotation. Awesome. And same deal. We want to get at um, where Unreal Z up. So we want to get at Z. So let's go over and grab, let's use the right stick. We'll do left and right. Do subtract here, you, and you over here. And we know that we're probably going to want to multiply for our speed here. Promote, um, Asian speed mult, and this will be Z, compile, and uh, Let's go back over here and awesome. So now controller. You see that now I'm using the right stick to rotate us around while we're driving. We can go forwards and backwards. Fantastic. Now let's build a nudge into this so that we can kind of nudge it left and right. And we can use the D-pad for that. Let's move that over. And then we'll add another local offset here. Split struct pin. And we're going to want to get at the X and Z location, I think. So let's use the uh, D-pad up and down and the D-pad left and right so that we can nudge it 
left and right. So let's go here, let's go D-pad, uh, up and down, like this, and let's do D-pad, right and left, like this. And we know that we're gonna want to multiply both of these again by speed molt. And let's do promote variable nudge speed molt. And we'll do this for Z in the script, I think. All right, let's go back over here. We oh, we need to set a. We need to set a uh, speed bump, and we need to. All right, always forget these. Let's make that so we can set them on the actor. Okay, so now if we go here, we should be able to move this. So I'm going left and right here, up and down, so we can make it fly. And I think I've got the left and right reversed. So let me reverse that. Let's see if that was on X. So let's reverse the left and right. Let's try. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. So if you wanted to nudge it around, like let's say you had it in the perfect spot and you know, somebody's like, ah, oh, you can just move it just a little bit to the left. And that's good. Awesome. Um, now the last thing is uh, right now it just drives around on one plane. If you wanted to be able to like fly up in the air, we can do that. So let's add here, let's add a add actor local rotation. Awesome, split struck pin again. There we go. Oh, we're gonna do uh, right stick up and down because we did right stick left and right to move it around. So right stick up and down, subtract. There we are. Let's move you over here. It's not tidy, but multiply and let's plug. And you can make a separate one for that if you want. So X and let's compile. Okay, so now we move around. Oh. So now we can go up and down and rotate it how you want. Now you may, this is, this makes it a little bit hard to drive sometimes. So what we can do is let's put, let's, let's put a gate here. So let's do branch. True, and let's promote this. Let's do um, fly. And let's take the default top off, make this public. Okay, compile that. Now, if we move over here, we see that no matter how I move left step up and down, we're good to go. We're driving around on one plane. If I go over here, and I say fly. Now I can move around. Awesome. So, like I said, this may seem simple, but it's got a bunch of value on stages, and it's got a bunch of value in live events. Where, you know, if you want to control things that happen on the LED screen behind any performer, or you know, even if you want to give control over things to the performer themselves, I mean that's. Something that we're constantly looking at is, is how to let the performer have control over some of the actions that are happening around them and behind them. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna use this as a jumping off point. 
for the next video where basically we're just going to take a end display setup and we're going to attach it to this particular blueprint. And then I'll show everybody how to set up the live link rebroadcasting or the new live link hub on a, so that you can get this data over to the wall and you can drive a wall. So hope this is helpful.